to the adventure and put my on W four C Y radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm very excited about our next guest. Has uh, a killer new tune and some other stuff for us to talk about. So let's welcome to the show, Kurt Dimer. How are you? Good. How are you doing, brother? Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I'm doing great, and uh, especially after uh, hearing your new song, Doom. It's a badass song for sure. Well, thank you so much, man. I'm uh, hoping it continues to, you know, gain traction all over the place. And uh, with folks like you helping push it, hopefully the folks at radio will continue to play and uh, we'll see where it goes all over the world. Yeah, and you uh, just did a couple tours, one with Mushroom Head, one with uh, Skid Row, and uh, basically, I'm sure you played the new song on tour. How, How was the audience like digging it? Yeah, we uh, actually out with, uh, you know, Buck Cherry, Skid Row in September, and like you said, Mushroom Head in October, we closed every set with Doom, and uh, I let all the fans know it's actually the song that's featured in my uh, feature film that's coming out in 2024, Hellbilly Hollow. It's the final scene song, which is uh, why I even wrote it in the first place was I knew I needed something for that movie. And, uh, you know, it also t- talks about the doom, you know, in a horror type movie, but it's the doom of life, you know, about addiction and what can happen to one and how dreadful that can become. And people received it so well. And once they hear it, we start ripping into it. The whole crowd starts moving and, uh, we really got really great response for it. So I love it. And let, let's talk a little bit about the movie. So, I people like you, you're creatives, and I think a lot of people don't realize that just because you're a musician doesn't mean you don't have creativity in all kinds of other areas, whether it be other forms of art like painting or a movie or what have you. So what was it? Let's start with what started with your passion for making a horror movie and a horror franchise. Well, it, it all go. You know, I did music till I was like twenty. Before I, you know, had to buckle down. I finished school and had a family and whatnot. And I suppressed my my artistic, creative side as far as music goes. I never knew I'd be an actor ever. That was never. I was always full of anxiety when I was young and didn't really I had to figure that out in my life first. But so that was never an option. But in two thousand seventeen, I guess you could say I my creativity. I took to the business world because I started my own oil brand, Starfire, and uh, built those companies, and they still run themselves today. And that that, that took a lot of creativity on a business side. But in 2017, I went to do a cameo because my oil brand was in a movie called Trading Paint about dirt track racing with John Travolta and Shania Twain and Michael Madsen and a lot of big actors. And I went down to do this cameo, and they offered me a speaking role because they liked my look, and they needed a track announcer. So I ended up getting in this movie and shooting this scene within an hour or two of not ever thinking I would be an actor. And then I'm shooting this with John Travolta, and I'm like, okay, well, that that was a sign. And I really loved that, and it didn't bother me at all. And I'm in the movie and made the cut and all that stuff. And Two months later, I get offered a role in Halloween, the reboot with Jamie Lee Curtis of the official one from the 70s, the the official sequel. And I get to be one of the few people killed by the Michael Myers and John Carpenter's Halloween. And while I'm sitting there 
in this gas station with James Jude Courtney, who played Michael Myers. We're just sitting there talking, and I got this shit all over my head, all this prosthetics. It took like three hours to put on to make me look, you know, gorily killed. And I'm thinking, you know, I could do my own horror franchise just like Halloween did in 78. Now they're doing this reboot, which I'm sure is going to be huge, and it ended up being huge. And I go, why can't I do the same thing? And that's what spawned me wanting to do Hellbilly Hollow. And this year in March, um, I just uh, shot a movie called Scared to Death out in L.A. that stars me alongside Lynn Shea from the Insidious franchise and Bill Mosley from the Rob Zombie movies. And Bill Mosley was one of my idols that I, I, I kind of modeled my character bull around for Hellbilly Hollow. So not only did I do that, but then here I am in March of this year shooting a movie with Bill and becoming great friends with him. And now we're working on another movie that we're going to probably shoot here in the next year that I'm writing right now. So that's how it all came to fruition and the music just kind of happened in the middle of it all wow <laughs> yeah i mean for somebody that never imagined being uh, an actor or involved with movies you've been quite busy <laughs> yeah it's crazy man i ne- well i never knew, thought i could do it i mean when i when you have anxiety and panic disorder and you don't know how to treat it, it you're mortified of getting up in front of little people at a concert let alone be in front of a movie camera you know yeah and uh once i figured all that out when i was like in my early 30s my whole life changed and now i can do whatever i love being in front of people i love watching them have a great time and and seeing that they're listening to my lyrics and applying maybe some of those lyrics to their life and just watching the joy they have you know and then the same thing with the movie i mean i'll love to go to the theater when scared to death comes out and just watch people's reaction to this right. really great movie that we're about to put out so it's very i'm very blessed to be able to do this and we only get one life and you all got to live it to the fullest man 100 percent. i always say that that's like my mantra i live life to the fullest every single day because you just never know you know and uh you never know my viewpoint is is if if I were not to wake up tomorrow, well, I wouldn't feel like unfulfilled because I have always lived life to the fullest. So, you know, I, I've had those experiences. Some people don't. Some people their whole life, they go without doing anything or scared of everything. And, you know, it, it's great that you found these outlets because, I mean, it's true for me. Tell me if it's true for you, but When you get up on that stage or you get in front of that camera or you get on the mic, there's like this switch in your brain that turns on and the way you would actually be off stage or off the mic as far as the fear and everything else goes away because you're like in, in a zone. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Be, all day, you know, you're on the road. We're on the tour bus. We're getting to the town. We're worried about are we going to get a shower? We're worried about where we're going to get some kind of food, and it's a big pain in the ass. And I'm a very chill, laid back guy. And don't get me wrong, I love the road, but uh, yeah, it's like I'm a calm, chill, mellow dude in real life. If you hung out with me, we go have a drink or whatever. But once I hear that intro. And yeah. I know it's my time, and we're always on time when we go on stage because we're we're very professional and courteous to the bands we're touring with. And once I hear that intro, it's game over. I'm like a totally different dude, and I just go crazy. It's like a 30, 45-minute aerobic workout, and I'm just going nuts. And I, I do it all on the fly. I'm not worried about anything. I might, I might I lost my sister and my dad in the last decade and they're both with me when I performed because they were the, the two singers in the family for the most part. And the, she was the thespian in the family. And so they're with me. And then my grandma, I just tell her, don't let me forget any of the lyrics. She lived to be 106 and was my rock in my life. I don't worry about shit. I go out there, kill it. And people have a great time. And I just love it now. Well, I, I love everything you said there in 106. Wow. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, she lived to be 106. The only reason she died at 106 is because it was during the year of COVID and nobody could go visit her in the nursing home. And she just said, fuck it, you know, and uh, eventually she just got tired of no human interaction. And that's unfortunately 
a lot of the unknown collateral damage that many people have I've know suffered uh, during that year, where a lot of us lost our grandparents that were probably elderly because we weren't allowed to go see them. You know, it's sad. Yeah, no, I and I'm totally with you. That that was a rough time for everybody, and especially like it's weird for somebody like yourself who's a musician and you're used to being out there with the public and on tour and stuff like that. And that two years of doing nothing and being isolated, like it's bad enough when you get home from tour and you go into that, that uh, almost for lack of a better way of putting it, depressive come down mood, you know, and then to have that for two years. So I could imagine somebody like your grandmother or anybody, you know, at that stage, like it is like, well, what's the point if I'm just sitting here, you know, doing nothing by myself, you know, nobody, no interaction with anybody. So it's horrible. Exactly. Exactly. Except, except the nurse, you know, and the same nurse every or whatever, you can only do so many little activities and you're 106. Imagine what's going on in her brain. Yeah. And the week before she passed, I, I had gone out on a tour during COVID. I, I was just getting started. I wasn't even going under Kurt Dimer. I had started out under Bald Man. That's how I got to L.A. And uh, I caught the week before I was in Vegas doing a show during COVID. I was able to do a show in Vegas during COVID, but I wasn't able to go see my grandmother. Go figure. That's so ridiculous. I, I call her, and she got, we had our last good conversation. And I, I said, you know what I'm doing, Grandma? I'm out singing about positivity and things that I write that I'm getting out of my brain over life. My grandpa was a motivational speaker, her husband. I said, I'm doing what grandpa did. I'm just doing it in rock music. And she was so proud and we had such a good call. And then a week later I lost her. So that was, uh, uh, it's tough, man, but she's with me everywhere I go. So. There you go. And sorry about that. And you know, it's, it's pretty wild because before you talked about your grandpa, I was going to say about, you know, with me and talking about the stage thing, like I'm also, I'm a motivational speaker. I was going to say that array, but it's pretty wild that your grandpa was one too. And it's funny and you probably feel the same way. Like I was saying that because before I get up on stage, like all these things are in my head and you know, you worry about screwing up, blah, 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 blah. Make sure to remember to do this, do that. But the minute I step on that stage, it's like all of that just goes away and I'm in a zone and I do what I do. That's it. You can't, you can't worry about, it. I mean, my first, you know, I haven't, I've only been touring two years now, uh, in a big way. But, uh, so, and really it started as in a big way because I went out on tour with my, my first big tour was with Jeff Tate. So it was a good tour wow. to start with him. You know, I learned a lot on that tour, and I used to more. I used to think through my lyrics all day on the bus, and just kind of practice through it in my head. And I don't do any of that anymore because I know it's just there's nothing to worry about. Just go out there and be you, and yeah. let it loose, and let it fly, and make each show its own individual masterpiece. That's the way I look at it. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and I always give people the advice, you know, just be you. That's what people Just see you. anyway, you know, like if you're not being you up on stage, people can tell. Oh, they can tell. And, you know, early on, you know, everybody in my, my band wanted me to dress in this different way or wear this hat or do that. And I finally just eventually just said, you know what, what, what's missing in my show is I'm listening to what everybody's telling me to do and mm -hmm. I'm not being me. Yeah. And, you know, it's like I, now I can go out every night and it's like I'm a painter. But what I'm doing is I'm putting on a show and each show is different. And each show has its own, I want to say different things. Maybe something about what's going on currently in the world, you know, in the, in the world. Maybe before I, like I do, did Hero, which is one of our big songs about our heroes in the world and the military and all that. And I, the other night, you know, the last couple times after that motherfucker up in Maine went and shot all those innocent people, I called him out to the crowd and we raised our, all our phone lights up and everything in honor of those deceased because of him. And we talked, we sung about heroes. So every nice. night is a different painting and that's the way I look at it. And that will leave that mark in that uh, human being's head, that fan that was in the crowd. So they're seeing a different work of art every night. See, I love artists like you that do that because 
you know, I've seen a million concerts in my lifetime and lit, I go on tour and I do radio coverage of festivals and a lot of festivals, as you know, they'll have the same bands playing. So I'll see like a certain band like 10 times in a year. And yeah. s- some of those bands, like just recently, I think I was at Aftershock and a band was performing and the person I was hanging with, I was literally saying the words not even the song but the words between the songs that the lead singer was going to say before he said them and she and then he would say them and and she'd look she was looking at me like how how did you know what he was gonna say (laughs) you know and to me you know not to throw shade but you know it gets me bored and even the bands i love it's like Oh, I, you know, I'll be at a festival. They're like, oh, you're going to catch your set. Yeah, I've seen them about six times this year. I think I'm done this year. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and it's not not liking them. It's more of the fact of like, I want to see somebody do like you do. And like, I'm going to get surprised every single set. And that makes it just so much more fun. Yeah, you got to be spontaneous. So it's, you, you don't want to make a photocopy of your show and photocopy it and just hand out the flyer every night. You want an original work of art, and that's what yeah. I provide. And I, you know, I, I don't want to be cookie cutter. And I, I think that's boring as fuck. And I don't want to copy myself. So I just want it to come out naturally, and then you feel it, and you know, as a fan, oh, this dude's real, and this is what he's feeling tonight in this moment, and uh, that's how I do it. So. Exactly. And, you know, it makes you more relatable and connectable by the audience because now they realize you're just being a person up there performing opposed to somebody that's just playing a role and rehearsing their script and getting out there and doing their script. Exactly. Exactly. That's not what it is. It's, um, they know your songs. You can hear the same song over and over on the radio or wherever you stream music, you know, as we continue to grow. You can hear that if you want to hear it. But when we come out and perform, you're going to hear that song the way we're feeling it that night, and we're going to rock it out. And I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it, depending on how I feel in the room and, you know, the vibe and, and all that. And once I decided to be myself and not listen to all the noises around me, our fan base is growing People are, are coming up to me going, you're the best man we've never heard. Um, I can't wait till these festival promoters like Danny Wimmer and everybody get, you know, notice us. And I don't care if we play at two in the afternoon. Once we break that, it's, we're just going to blow up because I, I, I can see it in the fans' faces. Like, this is a band that doesn't sound like everybody else, and they rock the fuck out. And that's rare nowadays. Like, if we went back to the 70s and 80s, you know, bands were unique. Nowadays, it seems like a lot of them sound the same. So I love that what you just said, because I think that's what makes bands stand out nowadays, especially, you know, you have a lot of bands that have access to things that people didn't have years ago. So they're almost able to produce it to make it sound the same as something else. And I'd rather have you be unique and stand out above the crowd. Yeah, that's my biggest thing right now with with uh, these the people who control the radio is I don't think they know what to do with me yet, you know, because I don't sound like what's big on Octane, you know. Right. Instance, but I've got my own unique sound, but I, you know, I refuse to try to make it sound. Why would I want to copy somebody else? They have their own art. I want to do my own art, and then once people finally see that people love this music and it's growing, then uh, it'll take off kind of like ACDC. They were different. They're one of my you know role models from the past. Van Halen, they went out with Black Sabbath. They sounded totally different than Black Sabbath, but they yep. have their own unique sound and style. And that's what I intend to do. So I'm just going to stick to it until the day I die. And if it never takes off, it never takes off, but it, it is. It's just, it's not easy to make it in anything in life. And you just never give up. And I'll just stay true to who I am and keep putting out songs that I, that I really dig and that I think the public will. And I think it'll eventually, that one will hit. And then everybody will know our whole catalog. So There you go. And, and 
I think definitely everybody should check you out because your music is badass and uh, everything you do is great. And uh, so how do people connect with you on socials, on the web? How do they check out the new song, your merch, and everything? Okay, yeah, yeah, everything. I mean, of course, Instagram is growing, so follow us on Instagram at Kurt Dimer, Facebook at Kurt Dimer. There's also the Kurt Dimer Fam Club on Facebook to join, so I'd love it if you guys would do that. And then on uh, X, we're on there, and TikTok at Kurt Dimer, and then the website is Kurt, K-U-R-T-D-E-I-M as in Mary, E-R dot com. You can check out my IMDB page, which would be awesome. Um, you can Google my name, and all kinds of stuff will pull up, articles, interviews, and then Spotify, Apple. Apple's growing every week now like crazy. Spotify is growing at Kurt Dimer. Um, and just follow us and share the music and share the love and check our videos and our channel on YouTube at Kurt Dimer and subscribe to that. And stay in the loop, and uh, we've already got tour plans are already going to be announced here soon, starting in January, and... Uh, Got a lot going on, man. Got to finish this album. I got to go shoot some stuff for my character, the Grog from Scared to Death. So I'll be out in L.A. doing that, and there'll be more videos coming out and whatnot. So uh, it's real simple. Kurt, K-U-R-T, Dimer, D-E-I-M-E-R. Google it. Follow us everywhere. It'd be great, man. Well, I love it, and I, I hope they do check you out because they'll be missing out if they don't. And thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Always, always, Pipe Man. Thank you so much, Dean, for having me, and uh, look forward to talking to you again. And let all the folks at iHeart or the festivals know about me, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon and we can do an interview live. Absolutely, I would love it. That'd be cool, man. Yeah, and if you ever want to go out uh, together and do motivational speaking, I love to help people. I love to help people not be scared of this world, and I'm a guy who's self-made nobody's handed me anything in life and uh i got a lot to share with people so let me know i'd love to go out and talk to people looking forward to it love it we'll definitely talk again all right my brother be safe and thank you for having me man anytime thank you for listening to the adventures of pipe man on w4cy radio